So let's get started. Greetings fellow aspirants. Today we are delving into the intricate tapestry of Niccolo Machiavelli's political thought. But this time we are shining a spotlight on his perspective mainly on religion and virtue. Welcome to UPSA Geek by NRG where we unravel the political philosophy for PSIR optional course for UPSC and also few other exams like UGC, NET and etc. Okay. So before starting, starting with Machiavelli on religion, let me give you a brief premise over which this entire theory will be built upon. Machiavelli's political thought isn't confined to the realm of governance and power dynamics. It extends to the religion and facet that adds further depth to our understanding of political realm and also the real politic. Let's begin by examining how Machiavelli approached the relationship between politics and religion. Machiavelli's time was marked by the powerful influence of the Catholic Church. As you all are already aware of, in the previous lectures, I have explicitly taught this. He was keenly aware of the church's role in shaping political landscape. In The Prince, that is Machiavelli's magnum opus, it offers insight into how rulers should navigate the delicate balance between political pragmatism and religious authority. One of the Machiavelli's key insight in the strategic use of religion as a tool for political stability. He acknowledges the importance of religious institutions in manipulating and maintaining order, suggests that rulers should manipulate this institution to consolidate his powers. Machiavelli grapples with moral dilemma in The Prince, as we are already knowing it. While he advocates for pragmatic decision making, he recognizes the moral implication of certain action. Religion for Machiavelli becomes a powerful rhetoric to justify political decisions, even if they might be morally questionable. Because for Machiavelli, it is not important uh, the decision, the timely decision is the right decision and sometimes the ethical dilemma might constrain the decision making power of the prince. Okay, so the relationship between the prince and the church is a fascinating aspect of Machiavelli thought. He suggests that a ruler must navigate this relationship carefully, sometimes presenting a facade of piety while making decisions that prioritize the state's interest, where he says that the end justifies the means. With this, let's get started in-depth analysis of the Machiavelli on religion. But before moving further, I would, I would love to have you all subscribe to the channel that is UPSC Geek and also show your love. So let's get started. So Machiavelli is not against religion. He was against church. He was against church only because church was corrupt at that time. Okay. Church was interfering in politics and was proving as an obstacle in achieving the national interest because the basic and profound statement by Machiavelli is that the end justifies the means. The end is the national interest which needs to be saved and promoted at every cost. But here church was acting as an inhibitant in order to pursue the end that is the safeguarding and promotion of the national interest. That's why Machiavelli was against a church. Okay, Machiavelli believes religion can be useful for prince. How it can be useful for prince? Let's see it. Thus, Machiavelli has a utilitarian approach towards religion. What is utilitarian approach towards religion? How religion can be used for our advantage, right? So what is the utility of religion? Religion is a disciplinary force, right? For example, when it comes to Indian context, when the name of God comes, there is an essence of fear in everyone because God is all almighty. We fear God and hence on the same context, Machiavelli is also advising to the prince that God can be a great disciplinary force, which can be of great help to the prince. Many persons do not commit wrong things out of the fear of God. Very true. He suggests prince to appear religious in public even if prince has no faith in religion. So give it thought. Why, what is the context out of which Machiavelli is suggesting this particular notion to the prince? That prince must appear religion in public even if prince has no faith in religion. Because he can use religion as a disciplinary force only if people trust him that he as well is a religious man. He knows the true essence of a religious. 
in that sense only he can impose religious as a disciplinary force upon the public upon the citizen right that's why machiavelli is very quite essentially suggesting to the prince that prince must appear religion in the public even though if he or she has no faith in the religion thus for machiavelli religion should not use the prince but prince should use prince should be in a position to use religion for the national interest because the end justifies the means okay the means can be anything that is religion that is iron hand that is that is civic virtue etc right but at the end national interest needs to be safeguarded and this is what machiavelli is suggesting to the prince that a religion can be a great means to promote a national in, national interest right so was machiavelli immoral in this case so what is immoral immoral is something very opposite to the to the set standards of the society to the set standard of the ethics right on one hand we are giving a higher pedestal higher respect to the religion but at the same at the on the other hand machiavelli notion is that a religion should be used as a means to achieve one's end so was machiavelli immoral in this case ek side mein machiavelli bol raha hai ki religion ek bahut hi utmost disciplinary force hai jahan log religion se bahut zyada darte hain but on the same side on the other side machiavelli is also saying to the prince that religion should be used as a means to achieve one's end it is just a means not an end in itself so was machiavelli immoral in this case because machiavelli stance is quite opposite to the set norms in the society particularly on religion right no the clear answer here is no he does not suggest prince to be immoral in the personal sphere he only permits prince to ignore ethics as, as far as national interest is concerned right he is not suggesting prince to be religion or uh, or atheist in his personal sphere because machiavelli has nothing to do when it comes to personal sphere of prince he is only concerned about the political arena because he knows the real politic during his time right and that's why he is suggesting that no religion or ethical dilemma should constrain the decision making power of the prince so as to constrain him in effective decision making and timely decision making right that's why he is suggesting to the prince that one should always appear religious irrespective of him being practicing or being religion in his personal arena or not a personal sphere or not he has nothing to do with the personal sphere of the prince but when it comes to the public sphere that is real politic he should be he should be very much particular about the religion okay hence it is better to call machiavelli a moral rather than immoral okay so what is a moral here okay a moral is something or someone who is not very much concerned about the ethics and set morals of the society so what is difference between a moral and immoral these are two same sounding adjectives okay but what is the difference so immoral are the ones who basically talk completely opposite to the set norms and 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 norms and uh, and ethics of the society but a moral are the ones who are not at all concerned about the ethics and morality they are not at all concerned about what is right and wrong they are the person who are a moral and hence machiavelli is also a moral because he has nothing to do with the right and wrong the ethics and 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 morality as the set standard in the society he is saying prince to be very pragmatic when it comes to real politics where the religion needs to be used only as a means to promote one's end this is as simple as this sound but sometimes not so simple as well because it needs a delicate balancing between these two great pillars of the society that is religion and politics ethics and politics he is indifferent to morality right he is indifferent he has nothing to do with ethics and and morality this is the basic notion behind a moral he being a moral okay machiavelli advises prince for expansionist foreign policy he was the first person to suggest that prince should have the army comprising of only the nationals not mercenary soldiers we will see why he is suggesting a army of only nationals and not mercenary soldiers in case of conquered land machiavelli suggests that prince should rule directly only if the culture of the people of that land is similar to the culture of the 
prince otherwise prince should select some local persons as his lieutenant or viceroy so first we will see why he is not suggesting mercenary soldiers or army of mercenary soldiers because mercenary soldiers are kind of paid soldiers any time they can turn against prince when circumstances are against prince right that's why he is suggesting a, a abandonment of mercenary soldiers he is only suggesting to the prince that the army should be comprising only of nationals because they will never stand against or they will never revolt against the prince they will always remain loyal to the prince and this is the basic idea behind him suggesting the army of nationals and not the army of mercenary soldiers right in the case of conquered land the machiavelli is suggesting to the prince that he should only engage in direct rule if he is familiar with the culture if he is not then he should appoint any viceroy or lieutenant governor who is familiar with the culture why because people will put more faith on someone who is familiar to them either culturally or socially or politically right and if someone is not familiar or culturally familiar to the particular state he should devoid or deject himself from being a direct ruling or ruler because at the end he will not gain the faith and trust of the people which is very important in any real politic because at the end the people are the one who will conspire against the ruler and hence they can execute the ruler that's why machiavelli is very succinctly suggesting to the prince that until and unless one is familiar culturally politically and socially with particular citizens he should not engage in the direct rulership or politics he should appoint any lieutenant or viceroy who is more familiar with the particular culture of the people all right so so this was all about his concept on religion right where machiavelli is saying that religion is very important disciplinary force which can be used as a means to achieve an end that is to promote a national interest all right for that particular notion of Mac, uh, machiavelli we cannot consider him as a immoral he is not someone against society or against norms and ethics he is just indifferent to the set standard he is not at all concerned about it people let people follow let people follow whatever they want to in their personal spheres but when it comes to politics the ethics the morality the religion should not inhibit the decision making power of the prince that is what is the notion or concern of the machiavelli so this was the idea of machiavelli on religion now let's see his idea or advice on fortune so basically he talks about a delicate dance between fortuna and virtue he used the term fortuna in italian and virtue okay what a delicate balance and dance between fortuna and uh, and and virtue a prince should revel from in order to have a harmony and promote the national interest in the society so let's see what is the advice on fortune which is being given by machiavelli to the prince he defines fortune as a circumstances which are not under one's control right circumstances which are not under one's control he defines fortune in terms of bad luck okay bad luck are usually not under one's control and hence the most relative term to the fortuna in context of machiavelli is bad luck he suggests that even when prince has all the qualities well versed in statecraft yet there is no guarantee that he will be successful why because bad time can strike anyone anywhere irrespective of the caliber prince possess when it comes to statecraft the bad luck of fortune can ruin the career of a of a prince right because bad luck can strike anyone anywhere okay so when bad times comes they come like torrential rains or roaring river why prince will always do preparation like creating embankments however still it can devastate the prince so what machiavelli is suggesting to the prince here is that one can always prepare for the misfortunes or the bad lucks because it can never be ignored it can never be postponed it can never be dejected one is very much prone to the bad luck because bad luck comes as a torrential rain right and hence machiavelli is, is suggesting to the prince that be prepared for the bad lucks be prepared for the misfortunes 
because everyone is prone to fortune right and one should be ready when it comes to preparation he is giving a analogy of embankment of rivers in order to avoid floods all right he suggests that the nature of fortune is like women why he is saying that the nature of fortune is like women women embrace brave men right why is he suggesting that that women embrace brave men hence if prince will face these times with courage he can convert bad times into favorable times very very important if a prince faces any misfortune time with bravery with brave with courage he can convert misfortune into good fortune he can convert unfavorable times into the favorable times into his favor what he needs to do that he needs a bravery and courage to face because he is making a connection here that our misfortunes are like women which only embrace the brave and courageous men and the one who give up easily they are going to devastate them because they don't like the man who are coward the men who are selfish avaricious right and hence he is making the analogy that women and misfortune or the fortuna is associated because they both favor the brave men and brave men and courageous men can convert the unfavorable times into their own favors into their own advantages right this shows that machiavelli is a realist but at the same time optimist as well he is very hopeful for the future he is very positive mind uh, positive oriented right because at the end in the case of fortune which is bad luck machiavelli is optimistic that a prince in the case of bravery and courageous can turn any misfortune into his own advantage and favorable times and hence though he is realist about real politics he is also optimistic right so this was all about the concepts in the prince the different advices on the human nature on the profession on religion on ethics on fortune which we have seen this is this is all about the 11 principle which is being rendered to the prince by machiavelli now let's see one another great work of machiavelli that is a discourses on livy so what this talks about just to give you a basic premise if the prince is talking about monarchical form of government he is taking into consideration that people are not virtuous people are not wise people are corrupt corrupt but on the other hand the discourse is more mature work of machiavelli where he is considering people to be more virtuous more wise and hence he is suggesting a republican form of government for them because when people are corrupt when people are not virtuous the people needs to be controlled by iron hand of a ruler and for that monarchy is the best form of government but when it comes to virtuous wise man even republic will be very effective for them because they have this basic understanding how a government should be operated or ruled right so let's see what does discourse talks about in his book the prince machiavelli supports monarchy in discourses he supports republican form of government which is the uh, epitome of aristotle's polity right in society where people are corrupt he suggests the rule of a prince a monarchy who rules with iron hand where people are virtuous have civic sense responsibility there he recommends republic okay according to machiavelli wherever necessary monarchy wherever possible republic but in no situation oligarchy or aristocracy why because they are prone vulnerable to corruption they are prone and vulnerable to the ill civic sense and responsibility they will always succumb to the power politics and hence will engage in the practices like corruption right in no situation aristot uh, machiavelli is suggesting to the prince the government of oligarchy or aristocracy he is suggesting to the prince that wherever necessary monarchy why necessary because people will gradually turn corrupt people will gradually turn perverted people will lose all the civic sense and responsibility and hence to bring them to the line to discipline them he is necessarily advising to the prince to use monarchy or iron hand but when the cycle of goodness will come when people will become more virtuous post disciplinary action 
people will have more civic sense. He will again resort back to the republican form of government. But in no situation there should be oligarchy or aristocracy. Okay. He does not prefer the rule of nobles or feudal lords because he was strictly against feudalism or church. This also shows the impact of his time and Machiavelli as the scholar of emerging capitalist class. Because all through the lecture, he came, he hailed from Machiavelli family who were the rich class and hence he also had the experience of real politics. Right? And his, he knew the essence of the capitalist class. And hence he always looked forward to promote the aspirations of the emerging capitalist class. He considers feudal lords as parasite class. What is parasite class? Parasite who encroach into the others, other sphere just to suck their blood. So feudal lords are like parasite class. He advised prince that in case of conflict between nobles and common men, in, in conflict between noble and common man, okay, there is a conflict. If there will be a conflict between noble and common man, prince should take the side of common man. Prince should always side the common man. Why? If there is any situation comes where there is a conflict between the common man and the nobles, where the prince has to choose one, either the common man or the noble, whom he should choose. What Machiavelli is suggesting here, the prince should choose the common man. Why? Because nobles will have the aspiration for power. Because they are like a parasite. They will always have aspiration for power. And hence they are challenged to the king. They will be threat to the king. Because they might conspire against the prince himself. The king himself. Because they have the aspiration for power. They want to rule. They have aspiration for rule. And hence they can conspire and overthrow the ruler. And hence the prince should always side the citizens. Because common man has limited aspiration protection of life and property and hence they will not bear threat to the king so this is the idea okay so let's do a critical evaluation of machiavelli like this is the overall critical evaluation like it includes all the prince uh, content and also the discourses okay so the most infamous criticism criticism of machiavelli is by sabine that is machiavelli is narrowly dated and narrowly located Right. So let's see why, on what basis does Sabine is criticizing Machiavelli to be narrowly dated and narrowly located. So Machiavelli is one of the most criticized figure in the history of Western philosophy. Okay. He is primarily criticized for his view on religion and ethics. This is two things where Machiavelli is making clear demarcation that politics and ethics are two different arenas. And ethics and religion should not interfere the sphere of politics because politics is more real politics which is pragmatic and completely different from the religion and ethics. Specifically his criticism of church, okay, specifically for his criticism of church because Machiavelli is a child of dark age. He has seen the ill practices which was practiced by the church through the institution of church and hence he is very vocal about the institution of church. And he will criticize Machiavelli and on the same basis Sabine believed that his pessimistic view on human nature church politics is because of the circumstances prevailing in the Italy during his time. Which is very true because Machiavelli idea is a reflection, reflection of the mirror of his time. Right, the real politics which was prevailing during his time, the expansionary politics which was prevalent in Italy, in Italy during, the, during his time the threat between the five principalities taking all this into the consideration he has come up with his theories in the prince and in the discourses okay that's why Sabine is somewhere limiting the perspective of Machiavelli as narrowly dated and narrowly located had he belonged to some other times his perspective might have been different because everyone is a child of his time and his place right his view would have been different had he belonged to to the different time and space very logical okay it is true that machiavelli was child of his time however it does not mean that his thoughts are lacking any universal and transcendental value very true because still in international politics machiavellianism is a widely used technique to promote one's national interest that is the main concern of machiavelli Right. Machiavelli is not only one of the most criticized figure, he is also one of the most unfortunate figure. Why he is more unfortunate figure? 
because Dunning has remarked that Machiavelli is severely criticized just for the telling truth, just for telling the real politics, just for telling the truth of politics. And hence he is the most unfortunate man who has been criticized for telling the truth, for telling the real politics. According to Dunning, it is an irony that everyone is Machiavellian in practice but no one accepts himself as Machiavellian. Why? Because Machiavellianism is also a negative connotation in the mind of the people. It gets associated with the negative terminology and practices such as cunningness, such as manipulative and etc. Everyone is Machiavellian in practice but no one accepts himself as Machiavellian. This is what Dunning is criticizing, Dunning is advocating Machiavelli as. Even when Machiavelli's ideas are one-sided, however, it is very important to understand this dark aspect of human nature and politics. Because being a human homo sapiens, we are composition of both good side and bad side. People though focus more on the good side, but they also have a sense or essence of bad sides in them. And hence Machiavelli is, is shining more light on the bad side. He is showing to the people that there is also a bad side of the individual. It is a mirror of their negative personality. And hence one should be very much aware about the same. Right? This is what about his, his criticism. We have seen his criticism of, of Sabine, that his ideas are very narrowly dated and located. We have seen his criticism of Dunning, that though everyone is a Machiavellian, but no one accepts himself to be a Machiavellian. One can be a Gandhi himself, who infamously criticized Machiavelli for his profound statement that in politics, the end justifies the means. And Gandhi profoundly, Gandhi propounds the idea that no one can expect a plant of rose by sowing the seed of bubble. So this can, this can also be one criticism. Now let's see an overall conclusion of Machiavelli. Machiavelli's thoughts are not only having practical importance but huge academic importance. Very agreeable. He laid the foundation of political realism. That's why he is also called as the father of political realism. His empirical methods also led to the emergence of behavioral method in political science. We can see his influence on the philosophers like Hobbes and he is the intellectual precursor of realist school of international politics like Morganthew. We will be seeing this very important stream of international politics called as realist school of which Morganthew is a great propounder. So Machiavelli is inspiration to all the realist school philosophers and also the uh, political thinkers like Hobbes and etc. who will talk about very pragmatic real politics which we will be seeing in the next lecture series. With this, I come to an end, guys. And let's see some of the most repetitive previous year questions. So these are four most repetitive and important questions. Comment on Machiavelli's secularism. What is Machiavelli's secularism? His notion of the differential between politics and religion. Critical examination, Machiavelli's view on religion and politics compared and contrast the view of Cotelia and Machiavelli on statecraft. Explain how Machiavelli application of empirical method to human affairs marks an important stage in the evolution of political science. So try attempting these questions by going through all the slides and try sending your answers to the mail that is naman g910 at the rate gmail.com. With this, thank you aspirants for showing your immense love and make sure to keep continuing showing your love by subscribing to the channel that is UPSC Geek by NRG. Also like to the video and you can share your thoughts in the comment section. I will also read it and respond to you as soon as possible. Thank you so much.